coming up in this episode. Just how much battery does your EV use when it's running the air conditioning? Well, let's put the Atto 3 through its paces and the results may surprise you. Let's find out. Welcome back everyone. So have you ever wondered how much battery you're using by running the air conditioning on your car? Whether you're doing a trip, just driving around town, or even if you've got the remote air conditioning on, how much energy are you really using? Now I have done an episode about the air conditioning before. It was mainly about the remote air conditioning function. So you can go back and have a look at that and learn a bit more. But today we're going to be mainly working out exactly how much energy your car is using when it's running. Of course that will affect the range when you're doing a long trip. Now I've travelled quite a bit around Western Australia, I've done many long trips. Probably about half the year I would have the air conditioning running. And that's because I live in the lovely sunny and quite warm state of Western Australia. Now I'm only concentrating on cooling today for obvious reasons. And my goodness, we have had a very long hot summer everywhere in Western Australia, I think, but especially here in the gold fields. Now, I recorded this a few days ago and check out those temperatures we've been having. And it's nearly April, so we've had a very, very warm start to autumn. And with all this warm weather still, I decided to actually test the usage of the battery to see how the consumption was. Now what does BYD say about all this? Well just quickly, here's a bit of footage from when my wife bought her Atto, the green machine. This is at the old West Perth branch. And yeah, you can see my wife there, she's pretty happy to have the new Atto. And anyway, the salesperson told us 1 kilowatt per hour. So, here's how I'm going to do my test. So the day in question, we're heading for 34 degrees. So the temp starts off at, you know, around the, about 20 degrees in the morning. For the first test, I decide to leave the car under my shade with the sun shining on the side, and that will start to warm the interior. Now for all of these tests, I decide to do the following parameters. So firstly, I'm gonna set the aircon to the low setting. Secondly, I'm gonna set the fan to the mid range of three. And third, I'm just going to leave the car running. It will have the daytime running lights on and the doors will be locked. I'll make a note of the battery percentage as I start the test. All right, let's start with test number one. Let's join me in real time. Okay, so for the first test here, I'm leaving the car with the sun sort of shining on it on a low angle. So we're going to leave it for two hours and see what the usage is going to be in that time. Okay, so the starting percentage is 87%. So I've put the air conditioning on a setting of three, sort of a moderate setting. All right, so that is two hours. At the end of test number one with two hours, we use roughly 2% of the battery, which equates to 1.2 kilowatts, which is slightly less than BYD's claim. So we've got 77% for this next test. I've just been out and done a job. It's midday exactly. So we're going to leave this car now for three hours this time. Exactly the same. That's right, so I've just started the second test. Three hours, let's do it. So the temperature in Kalgoorlie at the moment is 32, so the poor old Atto is working pretty hard to keep cool. You can see it's quarter past two, so another 45 minutes to run on this current test. And it's just gone three hours, so 71%. Let's go and work out how much that is. All right, the end of the second test there, three hours, we use 6% of the battery approximately, which equates to 3.6 kilowatts, just slightly more than the claim. 
but hey that's in the full sun at quite a warm temperature. My third test I've parked it more in the shade here now I'm gonna wait for another hour until the shade is a little bit more and it's covering most of the car and then I'll do it. It'll be interesting to see if that affects the test too. And I'm ready to go here I've just put the car on 71% is the starting point we'll do two hours and we'll see what it gets. Well, I've put the car pretty much in the shade so most of it's covered by the shade it's definitely a lot cooler there and we'll see if that makes a, a difference. That's a wrap for the test. So the final percentage there is 68%. I noticed that my, my other camera unfortunately fell over. But now, yep, 6.05. So that's two hours. And we'll go and work out and give you some figures. Okay, test number three, just over two hours. 3% of the battery. And that equates to 1.8 kilowatts. So again, just slightly under like the first test. Okay, so summarising it, I think all three tests were fairly close to the claim by BYD. The second test was the only one that was a bit over, and that was when the car was in full sun and pretty close to the maximum of around 33-34 degrees. So I would say that it's really a direct correlation between the air temperature outside to a lesser extent the shade. I think if your car's been sitting in the shade for a few hours and the temperature there is a bit lower that will also obviously have an impact on the the result but good i think now if you extrapolate that out to a, a longer trip you can see that it will add a little bit to your journey so let's keep it simple and say you do 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers that means you would otherwise have done 19 and that's about five percent more energy or to put that in terms, that's about 15 kilometers that you could have driven if you hadn't had the air conditioning running. So I don't know about you, but for me, I don't particularly like driving around in a sauna when it's pretty hot. And I'd rather, you know, have a slightly reduced range and have a cooler, more comfortable car. But I guess if you think you might be in trouble, if you're, you know, struggling to make the next charging spot, if you're on a long trip, well, turning it off will make a difference. You know, you might get a few extra kilometers and that could be enough you know, to get you there. So that's something to keep in mind as well. There you have it. I imagine it would be similar for most modern EVs. There'd be a small increase in consumption of the battery. All right, we will leave it there. Thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it as always and take care out there on the roads and if you are you know heading off road be extra careful to watch out for rocks and things like that we'll leave you with zoe and we'll see you very soon with more on down under ev adventures bye for now